Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. Today Google released Android 13 for Pixel devices and I have it installed on the Pixel 6a. I'm going to compare it side by side with Android 12.1 on the Pixel 5. So let's find out what's new. Let's start with the lock screen. On the left I have Android 12.1 on the Pixel 5 and Android 13 on the Pixel 6a. The first change is in the animations. If you have some notifications on your lock screen and the always on display is activated, when you tap on it you will notice that notifications will expand smoothly on Android 13 but on Android 12.1 they will slide from the bottom and if you have multiple unread notifications now they appear in a much smaller pill-shaped container and instead of the bigger one like before and of course the media controls of Android 13 looks totally different which is something I'm going to talk about later but now let's move on to the unlocking keypad first the numbers now appear at the bottom and instead of the top and if the pin code is incorrect you will see this new animation the emergency call button has been renamed to emergency and you will also see a different animation when you activate the feature so let me show you this one more time so this is android 13 and here is android 12 and lastly the keypad itself now matches the new design of the phone app and under the lock screen settings we have a new toggle called control from locked device when you turn it on you will be able to control your smart home devices without the need to unlock your phone under the sound and vibration settings, if you have the always show icon when in vibrate mode activated, now when you go to the lock screen, you will see the vibrate icon after installing Android 13. And lastly, the unlocking animation on Android 13 looks different. So here's how they look side by side. Now let's talk about the new changes in Material U. When you go to the wallpaper and the style app, you will notice a lot of more options to choose from under the wallpaper and the basic colors categories. So as you see here, I have four different sets of wallpaper colors to choose from instead of a maximum number of four. And also the same applies to the basic colors. I have a lot of options in addition to a new set of colors called dual colors that contains two basic colors at the same time instead of only one now let's talk about the home screen and the most obvious change is the bigger and thicker home navigation bar compared to android 12 it certainly looks better but in some apps like facebook for example you will see a bigger black bar at the bottom of the screen but the removal of this black bar at the bottom of the screen depends mainly on the developer and how the app is created because you won't see it in native google apps and other third-party apps as well the second change is the noticeably smaller font used in the app shortcuts there is a new lens icon in the google search widget the gap between the drop targets at the top is now smaller with android 13 the suggested app scrolling effect is back again with the final build of Android 13 after being removed from the previous beta versions. Next, the recent apps screen. And the first change, if you have two apps in a split screen view, you will no longer see the drag and drop buttons like before. The second change is the new animation you get when you tap on the select button. As you see on Android 13, it slides slightly towards the top, while on Android 12, it moves forward only. And lastly, when you try to drag and drop items from the recent apps screen, you will see only three recent contacts instead of four like Android 12. Next, the system wide search. Now when you go to the home settings and then search your phone, you will see a new option here called always show keyboard that didn't exist before and your only way to access this option on Android 12 is by tapping the ellipses at the top right corner but in Android 13 you have it here under the home settings and also from the ellipses as well. And you will also notice a noticeably smaller overlay card. The third change is the ability to search for apps in Google Play Store so I'm gonna type the same search query on both and here I have the Play Store shortcut in addition to one suggested app that I can jump to it right away and in other cases you might get only the play store shortcut without any suggestion like this unfortunately Google removed some of the features we saw in the previous betas of Android 13 like the ability to search YouTube and Google Maps directly from the system wide search and they only kept the Play Store shortcut. They also removed the ability to access the system-wide search from the home screen and we are back again to the normal Google app search. But the good news is now you can search for your screenshots directly from the system-wide search and as you see here, it will show you the most recent three. Google also removed the web suggestions from the system-wide search like we saw in the previous betas of Android 13 and all we get is local results. Now let's talk about the notification shade and the quick settings area and the first change is in the expand animation as you see when i swipe down slowly you will see totally different animations in both 
Let's jump right away to the quick settings and now we have more options in Android 13 like the ability to toggle the one-handed mode on or off. The second one is the scan QR code which will take you right away to the dedicated QR code scanner. And the third new tile is called color correction that can turn the feature on or off. The screen record will now give you the option to activate the show touches on screen which wasn't the case in 12L. The device control style has been renamed to home and it's also using the new home app icon on top of this when you go inside the page you will see a small arrow next to my smart speakers that doesn't exist in Android 12.1. The power settings and the edit buttons are now placed differently. So you have the settings and power at the bottom right corner with the edit button on top of them and also the power button has a fill color. When you expand the internet tile and then tap on the see all button to access the settings the card itself will expand into the settings page but in Android 12.1 it will dismiss your notifications sheet first and then go to the internet page. And if you have any apps running in the background like YouTube Music for example, you will see this new task manager that will show you how many apps are running with the ability to stop each app by tapping on this button. The screencast tile got a redesigned overlay card that has material use support and it matches the device theme instead of always using a dark color. I also noticed in Android 13 all the tiles are slightly thinner when compared to 12.1 and it's more obvious in the edit mode. One more change in the internet tile if you are using cellular data you will see a highlight on your mobile network. On top of this Google is using a smaller font which makes the card shorter. Now let's talk about the media controls as they got a complete redesign. First of all the album art will fill the entire background instead of showing only as a thumbnail with a solid background. The buttons are now outlined instead of using a fill color like before. You will also see the seek forward and backward are on the sides of the progress bar instead of showing underneath it. The thumbs up and thumbs down are now replaced with the repeat and shuffle. The play button is now circular and it appears in a separate line. When you tap on it, it will turn into a square and when you pause, it will turn into a circle again. The app icon is now bigger and it shows at the top left corner. And when you play a song, the progress bar will show you this squiggly animation. And when you hold the cursor, it will turn into a straight line. And once you release your finger, it will return back again. The media output switcher also got redesigned. First, it says this phone instead of phone speaker. And when you tap on it, you will see a much thicker volume sliders. But overall, the card is smaller because the spaces are less. You will also notice all the controls will match the album art colors and instead of always using your device colors like Android 12.1. The ripple effect we used to have when we tap on the buttons in Android 12.1 is no longer available. And when you tap and hold on the media controls, you will see redesigned buttons. First, the settings button has been replaced with a settings icon at the top right corner. The cancel button is still the same, but the Smith has been replaced with hide. And lastly, the media controls will always show in full size, even if the quick settings are collapsed, which wasn't the case in Android 12. Now let's talk about some random tweaks in Android 13. And the first one is the new clipboard manager. So for example, when you copy any text, now you will get this floating bubble that you can tap on. And this will allow you to modify the text the way you want and then tap on done to be copied again to your clipboard and you also have the option to share the text right away from here so you can use the nearby share copy the text or send it to any of your contacts and so on and so forth this floating bubble also works with photos so for example when i copy photos from the recent apps screen like this as you see i'm getting the same bubble which will allow me to share right away or in other cases i can tap on it and it will take me to the markup app. From here, I can make the edits I want and then copy the photo again and share it after the modifications. And with Android 13, the clipboard will be cleared after one hour for privacy reasons. The second change is Google Assistant is always in dark theme, even if your phone is set to light theme, like in my case over here. As you see on Android 13, Google Assistant is showing in dark theme while on Android 12, it's in light theme. And if you have a Pixel 6 model, when you try to add your fingerprint, after you finish the first 50%, you will start to see this guide to let you know how you should place your finger on the screen. So in this case, it wants me to put the tip of my finger and then I can put the sides and so on and so forth. And this will help you to set up your fingerprint properly. 
Change number five is the new system icon you will see in the notification shade when you connect your phone to a PC. Number six is the ability to copy your build number by tapping and holding on it. And if you are using your phone in landscape view, all the overlay cards will be smaller when it comes to Android 13. And on the Pixel 6 models, the double line clock is now shifted towards the top to give more space for the fingerprint icon. And lastly, you might get a notification if your battery is 20% or less to activate the battery saver. Unfortunately, I don't have one to show you right now, but I got it before on one of my Pixel phones. Now let's talk about all the changes under settings. And the first change is under connected devices. When you tap on see all, now in Android 13 says saved devices instead of previously connected under apps and then when you go inside any of the apps and scroll down the remove permissions and the free up space toggle has been renamed to pause app activity if unused with a small description underneath it also when you go to the permissions page of this app you will see a new permission here called notifications so you can give access to the app to send notifications or not and also when you open the app for the first time right after installation you will get this overlay card if you want to allow or don't allow the notifications from here next under notifications and then wireless emergency alerts we no longer have one toggle to allow or disallow the alerts. It has been removed in Android 13. Also, the options are different. Here, we used to have extreme, severe, and the amber alerts. Now we have warning, public safety, and test alerts. Google also removed the option to toggle the vibration on or off. Next, the battery. When you go to battery usage, you will see a slightly different graph. It's only using a bar chart instead of a mix between line and the bar chart. Also, you can tap on each bar to filter the usage, which is not the case in Android 12.1. Now, when you go to battery saver and then tap on set a schedule and then choose based on percentage, now the minimum threshold is 10% instead of 5. And when you go to extreme battery saver and then essential apps, all the system apps are grouped together in a set of appearing in between the full list of apps. And when you scroll down, you will see the rest of apps you have with the filter at the top to choose between frequently used battery usage or name. Next, under sound and vibration and then vibration and haptics, you will see some new options. The first one is a separate toggle for adjusting the alarm vibration that didn't exist before and one more for the media vibration. On top of this, the vibrate first, then ring gradually got a toggle on the front page instead of showing under a submenu. Next, the display settings. First, the font size and display size menus are now consolidated into one menu called display size and text. When you go inside, you will see two separate sliders, one for the font and one for the display, instead of having them separated like before. And also you have a preview section with multiple samples at the top, from here, you can also activate the bold text and the high contrast, which are accessibility features that you can also locate under the accessibility settings. If you made any changes to your display settings, you can reset everything back to default by tapping on reset settings like this. The screensaver page under the display settings also got a complete revamp with Android 13. First, there is a new toggle at the top to turn the feature on or off. The clock, colors, and photos options are now on the front page instead of being hidden under a separate menu. You will also see a new customized button on top of the selected option to further modify your settings, but previously to do the same thing, you have to choose the option first and then tap on the gear icon, but now in Android 13, it's a bit easier. You also have the option to preview your current screensaver before activating the feature. And lastly, when you go to when to start, you will no longer find the never option because you can simply turn off the feature from the main toggle. Next, under accessibility and then magnification, now we have a new toggle called the magnify typing. So if you are using the magnification feature in partial mode like this, and then you start typing while having this option activated, as you see, the magnifier will follow your words. Next, the privacy settings. And now when you go to the privacy dashboard and then expand other permissions, you will see some new items here. First, there is a new notifications permission that didn't exist before. The files and media permission has been separated into three different ones. First, you have files only, you have music and audio, 
and photos and videos. So with Android 13, the permissions are more specific. Now let's talk about the do not disturb settings. When you go to people, you will no longer find the conversations option. However, it's now located under messages under the name of priority conversations. And also when you go to messages on Android 12, you will see we have radio buttons, which means we can only choose one choice. However, in Android 13, now you have check boxes. So for example, you can choose stored contacts with the priority conversations at the same time, or maybe the priority conversations with the contacts and so on and so forth. So this new change will give you more flexibility. The second change is under the do not disturb schedules. Now we have toggles instead of the check boxes to activate any of the items and the settings button has been removed and now you can simply tap on any of the schedules to go inside and modify the settings. And as you saw, the gaming schedule crashes the settings app and it doesn't work properly even in the stable version of Android 13. But it works as expected on 12.1 without any issues. Now let's move on to system. The first change is under languages and input. Now you will see a new menu item called app languages. This item will allow you to choose a specific language per app without impacting your device language. So for example, when you go inside the calculator, now you can choose any of these languages and keep your phone's language exactly the same. You can also do the same thing under the apps menu by going inside one of these apps like the clock and then you will find the language item over here which will allow you to do the same thing but it's easier to do it from the system menu back to system and then gestures and then quick tap now we have the option to turn on the flashlight using the quick tap feature which didn't exist in android 12. under gestures and then system navigation now we have a gear icon next to the three button navigation and when you go inside it will give you the option to activate or deactivate hold home for assistant back again to system and then multi users first we got a new icon for the add user button and also when you try to add a new user you will see a redesigned overlay card and when you try to add a profile picture you will also see a redesigned photo picker with the photos and albums tabs android 13 will also give you the option to choose between eight different generic profile pictures from here and the last change to show you under settings is the new transition that take place when you switch between pages. As you see, it moves from the side, but here in Android 12, it has a different direction. Now let's talk about the split screen feature or split top. Now when you pin the first app towards the top, you will see two gaps on the sides instead of filling the entire width of the screen. And when you start the split screen view and then resize your apps, as you see the one that's getting bigger will only show the app icon, but in Android 12.1, both apps will show the app icon. And also when you try another split screen using a different app like this one, for example, and then you want to choose one of the two apps you already started in a split screen view. In Android 12, if you try to choose the bottom app, it will always choose the one at the top, but here in Android 13, you can choose whatever app you want and it works just fine. So that's pretty much it for today. Those are all the new changes in Android 13. Please let me know in the comments if I missed anything. But for now, thank you so much for watching and see you soon.